All right, so we're going to start with your Chinko vaults, and we're going to just look at five different runs here. Something Gerald George said, who many of you knew as one of our early technicians in the sport, that vaulting requires the skills of an advanced tumbler and the running speed of a champion sprinter. And we both thought that that was a very good description of vault and to emphasize the importance of the run. So we're going to take a look at some runs here. We're only going to see the run, so you won't see anything from the time that you get to the board or the table. We'll then go back and look at them with the vault so you'll have an idea of the impact of the run on the vault. So here's our first gymnast. Number two. Number three. Was number four and our powerhouse number five all right so hopefully you saw a difference in the runs themselves so you know that you're looking for a somewhat even running pattern but that accelerates as the gymnast gets closer to the table and a more powerful run is going to typically all other things being equal result in a more powerful and dynamic vault one that is able to go higher and further than ones that have a slower, more sluggish run. But let's look at the vaults that came from these runs. Okay, so there we've got a beginning level optional gymnast, and you can see she kind of slowed down, had a couple stutter steps as she approached the table, and that diminishes the dynamics and the power that she brings to the vault process. This one is running and accelerating more, and it does allow her to flip her vault. This one has a nice steady run. She accelerated slightly as she was getting to the table. She didn't have a super powerful run. In contrast, this gymnast has a very powerful run and accelerates as she is approaching the board and the table. And then, as I said, our powerhouse vaulter Simone, she just uh, has so much power running down and she accelerates into her Yurchenko. That and several other things about her mechanics allow her to do some unbelievable vaults. That run that you could see the first girl, she was running flat footed and not accelerating and obviously didn't do a high level vault, but it definitely affects your dynamic category of up to three. So that comes into play even though we don't actually judge the run. So the Yurchenko vaults have been around a long time. Uh, we wanted to show you some video of the originator of this vault, Natalia Yurchenko, and it was named for her at the 1982 World Cup. And then the following year, we could find a video of her doing it with a full twist in the tucked position. And by 1985, we found video of her doing it in the laid out position with a full twist. So we have Natalia Yurchenko to thank for the vaults that we are now seeing. Uh, the more advanced level 10s are doing the layout Yurchenko full and the one and a half. And a very few are doing a double. Even though this vault has been around for a long time, we really haven't spent enough time teaching people how to judge the pre-flight or what to look for. So that's what we're going to focus on right now, is what is the body shape that we think is the most effective for the pre-flight. This is pretty close to perfect. I think the only thing that you could see there that you'd like to see differently would be that her legs would be together, her feet would be together. Her head is right between her arms. Her armpits are flat, and you will hear some coaches talking about having a flat armpit as opposed to talking about a shoulder angle. Later on when we talk about shoulder angle in the repulsion phase, I think it's a helpful distinction to make is between where did the shoulder angle occur? Did it occur here in the pre-flight body position or did it occur on the table? So here we're looking for flat armpits, a very tight arch, totally in control of her body from her hands all the way down to her toes with their legs they should be totally together. 
and they're but they're totally tight you can tell that she is feeling her entire body in a tight position all the way through to her toes and it is fully extending so that's the shape we're looking for we're looking for the kind of this upside down banana kind of a shape a tight very tight arch this is an example from a training camp you do see the flat arms you see her head in for the most part and a very tight arch and again she's fully extended all the way through to the tips of her toes so we'd like for you to try to draw the pre-flight position of the athletes that you're going to see we put them in slow motion because this is actually very hard to do in regular motion uh, but we do have them in slow motion and you will see them two times and then we'll give you our estimate of a drawing of what the pre-flight looked like All right, so for your drawing, we have on the left side a green line drawn right through the center of each of her body parts. And you can see it's pretty textbook as to what it is that we showed that we thought was the ideal body position. So she does have the head in, flat arms, very tight arch, and it's a little blurry, so it looks to me like she does have a nice tight control of her body all the way through to her feet. Now we're going to do the same thing. You can try your hand drawing again. All right, Just give you a second to complete your drawing. Okay, there's what we drew. So here she has her bent arms. Her head is definitely out. Her arms pits are not flat. Her legs are just loose and dangling, and that results in bent knees and flexed feet. So you'd have uh, considerable deduction on this for the pre-flight. So now we're going to look in the support phase and what the body positions should be. So in these videos, we want you to watch for the shoulders, head alignment, and body posture. If it's straight, we want the body alignment to be straight from her hands through her head and hips and her feet. So here's this same gymnast. And now instead of watching just there, we're watching here. She's in the support phase. So some of the same body position errors that happened in the pre-flight continued through into the support phase. Her head is still out, her arms are bent, and she looks to be, it's hard to tell, but she looks to be pretty loose in her body, not totally tight and extended. And of course we can't see her feet, so we don't know what's going on up there. Okay, so we'll repeat that. Try to focus on the support phase body position right there. So now let's again try to draw the pre-flight. And you're drawing. Okay, so as she comes on, her head is out of alignment, her arms are flat, She's got a pretty tight arch, but her loose legs result in having bent legs and her legs are apart. So if you compare the picture on the right that doesn't have the drawing on it, you can really see her head is out of alignment. And here she is as she's going into the support phase. This was a good example of what happened is she didn't have the shoulder angle on the pre-flight, but she created the shoulder angle because she had to stay on the table so long before she could get off. And that created the shoulder angle so once again, we have another vulture. And you will get to see the rest of that vault later on today. But we wanted to use her because it's about as perfect as we're going to get in terms of body alignment. Her legs are just a little bit apart, but look at everything is in perfect alignment. And then when she goes to leave the table, look at how perfectly aligned her body is there. And you're going to notice, if you if we could play this further, like we will eventually, she's going to leave before vertical, and that's what's going to allow her to have the time to do all the multiple twists and saltos that she does in the air, getting off before vertical. All right, so now we have a new set of videos. We want you to try to draw the pre-flight or the support phase, whichever one that you think you need the most work on, or whichever one you can catch. You'll see a video one time in slow motion, one time in a freeze frame, 
Then you're going to see it four more times in slow motion so you can focus on whatever it is that you might have missed or reinforce what you actually saw. This is number one. Okay, so there's what your drawing would look like. So her head is in. Her armpits are fairly flat. It's a little hard to tell with the way the video is, if, if they are or if that's her leotard, but that it is. She's got the beginnings of a tight arch position, but she's not really in control of her lower body, and so her legs are loose apart and bent. And we can't see the feet, but most likely they're still in the flex position there. So when she is on the table, she's got a slight shoulder angle. Her head is out. She definitely has a pike body position and that pike is going to affect the height of her vault because her feet are going to already be going downward because of the pike and that's going to be where the momentum of the vault is going to take her. It's going to take her down as opposed to up. Now it's going to go four more times so focus on what you would like to see. You see that pike, that it's really a severe pike when she left the table. And you can watch and see that, that her hips did not rise very much. Okay, we're going to do the same thing with a different gymnast. So here what you can see, she actually does come on with a shoulder angle, bent arms, her head is out. Hers is not what we would call a tight arch. Hers is she just has a very loose back. I would imagine she's very flexible. So she is bending, <laughs> but it's not necessarily a tight controlled arch. And of course her legs from the knees on down uh, are loose and bent. She's on the table for so long you can see that the shoulder angle is created but also what has happened to her body alignment. Her head is out again, her body is not in an alignment at all and she is going to just go straight downhill again because look at where, where her body is taking her. Her body alignment is such that she has really no option to go up. So again focus on what you would like to see Okay, so if you're judging these vaults and you see one like that, you're going to have quite a few deductions for the pre-flight as well as the support phase. Number three. If you saw that much detail in regular motion, your eye is pretty good. Uh, most of us would have just known that there was something wrong <laughs> with our leg position and that we wouldn't have seen a tight arch. But now that we see it, we can see that one leg is severely bent, the other is most likely slightly bent, the feet are flexed, legs are apart. Her arms, they don't look to be totally flat, they look to be a little bit bent, but again, that could be the shine of her leotard and the lighting. Uh, but it doesn't look like the perfect arch position that we want the tight arch position. So again, you would have a pretty good deduction there for body position in the pre-flight and in the support phase the same thing. Now she's on the table so long that she creates that shoulder angle. Her head is out. Her body's piked. She actually has even a little arch. Alright, so four times you can watch what you would like. And number four. Immediately you would notice, I believe, that this is a better body position than the ones that we have seen before in this type of exercise. She has a tight arch body position. It looks like her legs are a little bit apart. And she may have her arms not quite as flat. Uh, as they should be. Again, we may have an illusion there because of the type of leotard she's wearing, but uh, a pretty good tight body position.
she really never does get flat arms anywhere in any phase of that vault. They're always just a little bit not fully extended. All right, number five. Hopefully you saw immediately a big difference in that one and number four. So she actually does come on with her head out and a shoulder angle, attempting a tight arch position, but really doesn't have that tight body alignment, but still loose in the knees and her feet. So she's not quite there yet. And then what you'll see in the support phase is she just rides that shoulder angle around. Number six, again, hopefully you're starting to see some things that you might not have seen just five vaults ago. I'm sure you noticed an arm bend, but it's not here that it's happening. It's going to be in the support phase, and then she's late getting off, and so she has no possibility of getting as the maximum height that she would like to have. There's the arm bend that you can see in real time. We're going to uh, now focus on the post-flight trajectory. What we mean by that is that vault is about flight. And the story I like to tell is a clinic that I went to many, many years ago when the elite compulsory vault was the Yamashita half. And it was the first year for the Yamashita half. I was in a gym in Illinois. We were doing a clinic, and Muriel Grossfield was the clinician. The judges were trying to figure out how to judge this new compulsory vault, the Yamashita half, and there were two requirements. One was that the gymnast had to have a certain degree of angle of the pike part of the vault, the Yamashita part of the vault. And then in addition, the gymnast had to have an open position for the half turn part of the vault. So there were two different sets of angles. Well, you know how we are about angles, judges. We live, we obsess about angles. Once, once you give us angles, we'll just keep going on and on about them. So that's what happened. We're, people were sitting on the floor. This is back in the days when we did clinics on the floor and, and literally on the floor, sitting on the floor. And we were all talking about, you know, oh, no, I think it was this amount. Oh, I think it was that. You know, Muriel got frustrated with us all and she stood up and said, stop, stop, stop. Vault is about flight. The athlete who has the most flight, all of the things being equal, that's the vault that should win. That stuck with me. I was a brand new judge, and I, I that just hit me as like, oh, vault is about flight. So that's what we're going to emphasize today is the post-flight trajectory, which is, of course, it is affected by everything we've already talked about. The run, the round off, the back handspring onto the table, and, of course, the ability to or get the repulsion that you need to do to have the trajectory we want. So we're going to pass on that information to you. There have been some research studies that have been done to find out what is the optimal post-flight trajectory, and they literally watched all the best vultures in the world, recorded them, and then they uh, converted that into what the ideal uh, post-flight trajectory was, and it ends up being like this. So if your table is here where the straight line is, the vault should rise, and then it should go out, and it comes down in a trajectory. So here is a gymnast doing a Yurchenko layout, and you can see the same trajectory from the table where her hands are. The big red line follows up. She completes whatever action she's trying to complete, ideally by the apex of the vault trajectory, and then she opens and lands and should be able to land um, not necessarily straight up like this diagram is showing, probably slightly leaning forward. You may have seen this on YouTube. It's a slow motion stop action of Michaela Maroney doing her vault. And as you can see from the way that they were able to capture it, it's a, and she, of course, is one of the best vaulters in the world, it is exactly that trajectory. So from coming up, you can watch her hips are still rising, rising. She's completing her turns. She's doing so many turns, she still has turning on the way down. 
and then she is landing, as I said, a slight word leaning position. Now that's not often what we see, but we do see three common trajectories. We see a trajectory in which the gymnast is able to go up, but not very far. The other trajectory we see quite often are gymnasts who can go out really far, but they hardly get any height at all. That should also have a pretty serious deduction because height, as Muriel said, vault is about flight. She flew, she just flew horizontally. And then the ideal one we've already seen, we're going to draw it here and then we're going to play a, a vaulter who is going to demonstrate this trajectory in her vault. So that was her trajectory. We put little dots on her hips as they rose and you can see it actually goes up exactly like that trajectory that we saw. So when you're Judging vault from now on, or watching one video, pay attention to the trajectory of the vault. That's what we're calling the flight pattern of that vault, because vault is about flight. Now, of course, we have to watch Michaela. She is absolute state of the art right here. And the reason the score is so huge, watch this, as she leaves the table, her body just explodes, like out of a cannon. Look, she's still going up, and look still at the going form. up. Legs are squeezed together. Beautiful. Check out the landing. Oh. We've seen that ball over and over again, but that is very helpful for this lecture. Most of us, when we saw that vault, thought there'll never be another one like it. But of course, we have some very good vaulters and Simone came along right after that. Watch this vault, the amplitude she gets in this vault, sky high, and look at that landing. Now let's watch that same vault in slow motion. Okay, so there you can see the perfect trajectory. Now we're going back to reality, and Linda is going to walk us through some a real, what we call real vaults now, because we've seen the ideal. <laughs> because Simone was not real. She was superhuman. We're going to look at some of these, and so look at the trajectory of the vault, and we want to make sure that you can eyeball it and say, yeah, that was good. Yeah, that was big. No, that was short. Um, and start to get that in your mind, and hopefully today you will have gain more knowledge in separating the different phases of the vault. We're going to look at uh, your Chenko Tuck and you're going to draw your little arc of her trajectory. And we'll see her again. Here she is in slow. Notice how she's tucking right away. She has her head sticking out, her knees are bent. And so she's really not going to go up much farther than where she is right now. So she's suffering in height and therefore, of course, landing low and close. Even though she's a little girl, you're not going to have that big high and far trajectory. You're going to have something like this. And there she is again. You can see that she got on there and she had to stay on the table a little too long also. New girl. Okay, and we'll watch her again and draw your arc. And she's on, she's got some bent arms and her head is out a little bit. Her tight arch is not real tight and you see the legs apart. So she's gonna block off and she didn't tuck quite as early as the girl before, but she still is a little early in that. She does have some height, but she's still not gonna go real far, but better than the last girl. So comparing your little arcs, you see the little green arc there would be her. Yes, that fault should score better than the girl before her. Compare. <laughs> there is no comparison there. So when you draw her arc, it's still going up. Up, up, and out. So she had the great big arc that we would love to see. And when we ever see that, we go, wow. So, you know, vault is about flight, but vault is about big, powerful, high, far. Those are 
kind of some adjectives. So now we're going to draw some more. You get to choose. Are you going to draw the pre-flight, the support phase, or the after flight of this vault? Your Chenko pipe. Okay, here she comes on and slow and can draw that. Look at her legs, look at her armpits are not open. Uh, she needs a little bit tighter body in her lower body and her arms look like they're probably going to be bent on top of the table. So not the ideal shape there. Her armpits are not flat. And now she's on and pushing off with a little shoulder angle and a little looseness in her back. And her trajectory wasn't poor. It just could have been bigger if she was tighter coming on and getting pushing off. We'll see her again. When you look at it that way, it looks just kind of flat, like she got on and just pushed off straight across. And you didn't see that rise off the table. Okay, another uh, Yurchenko layout. There she is on, and she does not have her armpits flat. Her head looks like it's going to be poking out when she actually is on the table. Her legs are pretty tight, but she's pushing off with that shoulder angle right there. And her head is out and a little loose lower back as well. And so that's all going to not let her go as high as she could, even though she was better than the others in her layout shape. And another layout. Okay, here she comes, and there's her pre-flight. Um, it's not bad, a little loose in the legs, hard to see. It's a little blurry to see if her armpits are flat, but it looks like her head is in line. And then when she blocks off, she's got kind of a shoulder angle there instead of um, getting totally stretched. And her legs are just a little bit loose, her knees are soft. Her shape isn't too bad in the air, but it looks like it was kind of one of those angles going up, but not out. Another layout. She's got the not really a tight arch. She's kind of stiff in her back and her knees are bent and her legs are apart. Is that going to help her get off the table? And now she's getting off with that shoulder angle and her head is out. So these are really hard things to see in real speed. But when you look just at one point, one part of the vault and just keep looking at that, it'll help you when you see the whole thing together. And it's just like judging optional bars just judge execution or just look for difficulty or just do execution of skills and then work on bonus you can do all the parts and then put it all together to do the whole routine so we're doing that with vaulting and we're just doing the parts of vault so when you do repeat them again and again and you put them back together you see more when you see the whole vault couple more your chenko tuck full We have some problems there, but she doesn't have her armpits open. She's got a kind of lower back arch, not really a tight arch in her back. And then we have the bent legs that are like 90 degree bent. So uh, that's a big deduction for her right there. And then she's going to probably carry those bent legs through on top. Yes, she does. And they're bent up there and she has the shoulders. And you notice that she's already kind of twisting a little bit on the table. So if we could see that in real speed, we might have a temp off for that, but I think it's more obvious that she has a shoulder angle and the body position is way off. And here she goes, let's see if she goes up. Her trajectory is not bad. She had some decent flight. It's just that it was pretty messy. All right, layout double. Okay. 
Well, that's kind of a wow. So let's see how she looks coming on. Really tight legs, nice stretch, arms right by her ears with flat armpits and tight body line. So that would be ideal. And now she's leaving and look at how nice and tight she is still. She might look like she has a tiny shoulder angle, but it's big and it's far. So that was showing us what we'd like to do. Now, if you wanted to play a game yourself and you had a bunch of videos that you wanted to watch, just like we are, take colored pencils and do the same thing and draw the arcs and use a different colored pencil for each one you do. And you'll see um, who's the winner today with the colored pencils right on top of each other so that you can tell who had the biggest trajectory. And if she had the biggest trajectory, highest and farthest, she probably had pretty decent other parts of her pre-flight, her run, her dynamics, and her shape. So that's just something fun to do. Okay, ideal pre-flight, nice block, a one and a half. Oh, I like that girl. <laughs> She's amazing. So here we go onto the table. And again, she's got another great pre-flight like the girl before. She's leaving before vertical. She's stretched and she maintains that stretch and she goes up, up, up and out, out, out. So, and it looks really pretty in the air, I have to say. Wow. <laughs> 